Hello and welcome to Fest 2 Live. My name is Frank, and today with Jose together, we go further to the Wood second second part of right. now our timber framing episode. And for those of you who didn't assist the first episode, this is like a series of timber framing episodes. We we had this is now the second one, and in the first one we built the walls. The walls. It was about timber framing wall building and today what we want to show you is like all what's coming on top of it the, the constructions of the rafters rafters yeah. the posts, posts and, and so you know the name of the other one as yes well? i know it the rich yes the rich <laughs> the rich perlin exactly the very good perlin. you you you're a uh, quick learner yeah, frank I'm, I'm i'm today the apprenticeship because you know Jose is a carpenter, so I'm a little bit of carpet maker, joiner, he's a carpenter, so he's a professional today and he will give you a little bit of overview how you can yeah, produce, mount these kind of construction. Jose, before we start, I think we need, of course, also a drawing, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> first of all, you need uh, a bunch of money when you start <laughs> uh, building. All the time when you will build and houses like that one. <laughs> and then if you if you have enough money, you can uh, start uh, making uh, some plans. And I have, we did all the plannings before. Now on this piece of paper, cool. we did this on the computer with a CAD program. This is very similar mo same very like modern. Similar normally. same like the cabinet maker also when they have uh, yeah cabinets. Okay, yeah. we have done that. So we did all the thinking before yeah. and the drawing, we did all the rafters, uh, the sorry, the studs, the studs and the wall, all is ready. Now what's next step? So this depends a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, what often the, the first step would be to begin with the rafter processing. You know why? I think when, when it comes the material to the job site, yeah. maybe you have it all on a, on a crane. Yeah, first of all, it's on a truck, maybe. On a truck, right. Yeah. <laughs> you unload it on the job site, yeah. Yeah, and then you want to pick the pieces how you need them. Okay. And what would be the first one you need, or the last one you need? That one. The exactly. Rafting. So this is normally on, t uh, on mm. uh, the We first have layer. here, in our example, four of them, but normally I think on the job site, it depends how big is that house, you have much, much more. Yeah. So. Let Let's start with the rafter um, processing and for the rafters we can use a similar setup than uh, with how we what we use with the walls mm -hmm. and therefore we use the KPEX, the KS120, the our mitosol. mitosol. Mm -hmm. So let's check here the video and you see here first of all the quick look at the plan and then we have all the markings first what we do on the rafter i said here on this it's a, a german style alpha square it's called or rafter square um, we i mark one example rafter here and of course um, i have to look at the plan and so this is now the lower, like the E on the eave of the um, of the roof, the lower part of the rafter. I have the the vertical line and here the horizontal line, where the rafter later will sit on the construction. Then I set up the mitosol. Of course, I need the same angle. In this case, 15 degrees, and then you can begin and feed in the, the, the rafter. What I really like here is the double line laser. You see perfectly on the cutting line. Make sure that you cut on the right side of the line. Um, and then next thing is I prepare everything to make these repetitions so you probably you have seen it on the extension i have this possibility to uh, have this stopper and then i have these parallel cuts on both sides of the rafter and then 
I do all rafter cuts one after another uh, repetitively. So in this example, uh, in our model, it's only four rafters, how Frank already mentioned, um, but you can continue chopping off these woods easily if you need more. So one, two, three, four, now it's ready. And yeah, that's the first step of cutting all the rafters. I, uh, and yeah, next step would be what you guess. What w what's the next? Because now we have cut this right. cut and these also two angles, fifty yes. degrees. I saw. And Fifteen. Uh, yeah. What I like is these these workstation with the capex. So the 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 whole capex on that stand. It's 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 really nice. And so you have also the possibility to do that long this, this really long. Timber. Yeah, I think you told me uh, 12, 13 meters. Yeah, we <laughs> use them. They are 13 meters long, <laughs> and um, yeah, you and you, you use, you use the really roller stand yeah. on both sides, and you can really work effectively, and adapt this as well for you as for your yeah purposes or your sh workshop you have. Super. Yes, the next step, uh, of course, we we have to use this detail here, and uh, I know you would call that uh, birth mouth yes <laughs> especially <laughs> birth mouth <laughs> and uh, also uh. this horizontal cut yeah this the seed cut here for, but jose from my understanding so this is one of a, 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 a construction but a sample but normally one, one of many frank yeah right one right. of many frank so this is in this case um we want to wrap it up with insulation material later and in modern buildings often you want one single layer of insulation material. By the way, this will be uh, another episode where right. we deal with that. Um, so coming back to rafters, we have rafters uh, with the birth mouse here as well mm -hmm. and coming out the rafter. And yeah, there are many ways of construction, uh, but yeah, you can do it similar than the upper one. So um, also in different countries, maybe different applications, yeah. different uh, situations there yeah. and uh, it depends what is in the region traditional. Okay, so many ways to build. Now we show you one way to build the, the birth mouse from the, uh, uh, this upper detail and later we check how we do the lower one. What kind of tools do you use now? What, what <laughs> type of tool? Um, <laughs> One tool, a carpenter, the carpenter's best friend <laughs> um, is the HK85, so uh, let a circular let saw. And um, with this, when you have this, you can do a lot with it. And um, yeah, let's have a look at it. So now we don't use here again the rafter. Here is the marking for the seat cut. Here is the upper uh, part where we see the birth mouse marked at one rafter, and um, and now I want to explain here the setup. I have here the circular saw mounted with a parallel guide, and I just picked a scrap piece of, of wood and cut the angle. 15 degrees in this case and screwed it on the um, parallel guide and now I can use this as a support and I have now this full screen mode maybe the technique can handle that so now you see that it's seat up here and it really nice and easy goes into uh, this horizontal cut and I hope for you as a joiner, Frank, um, you, you're happy with the this results. Looks, this looks really good, really good. But now you changed the, the uh, pearl guide. Yeah, now we did first the horizontal cut now, okay. and now we ha still have to do the, um, like the vertical cut. Ah. And therefore, I change the parallel guide and flip it over. Mm -hmm. Then I can use it as a, uh, you can say, table extension. Okay. And um, well, this is the line which I want to cut. I, I set the angle. I wonder a little bit that you don't use in that uh, application the guide rail. Yeah, that's 
a very good hint, um, but imagine you have now here on this oh. part a guide rail and you have only like yep. six centimeters. <laughs> um, the guide rail just will flip and yeah. you don't have the supportive space. And that's why I use now here the parallel guide to give me a more uh, better support of the, uh, of the machine on the material. But that is the, a free cut. Yeah, free, free cut. cut on the line. I have I can have a, have a good view on the line. I have I've I see here as well in this yeah, area. This is cool. I see here both sides of the saw blade. I'm not sure if you can see that. The red line would be the left side of the cut and the other one would be the right side of the cut. And um, so cut is done. And now just some little cleaning with the chisel and the Eve birth mouse is ready. So next step would be drilling here some holes. In this case, we want to mount the rafters. I'm not sure if we can, the technique can maybe help, with help me with that. Um, um, so I drill here the holes. This will be like a, a piloting hole for uh, the screws, which will be used for a mounting process later. And of course, we use here a cordless screwdriver, which is powerful enough for that. So I see that works pretty good with the HK85, with that pearl stop, with that uh, yeah, small self-made accessory. It's uh, yeah. only a piece of wood. And uh, you have here also a 50 degrees angle, uh, cut it on that uh, Exactly, piece. 15 degrees. Yeah. This, of course, depends on your roof. On roof. Uh, you will find these roof angles uh, always on the machine as well uh, yeah. and use the same angles. So yeah. that was now the, 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 the birth mouse, but the next one is this uh, uh, horizontal cut, what we have uh, do now. And for that, you use also the HK85? Of course, <laughs> HK is the best friend of me. <laughs> I love it. So I will, <laughs> I, I will show it. So HK85 with the, to make this horizontal cut. And you remember the, the first cut we did with the KS60 and now I have here the cape, um, the circular saw attached to the smallest um, FSK rail and yeah, I have my lines, two lines on, on the corners where I easily can align it to do and make the right cut. And then I flip the rafter over when it's done and do the same on the next one. So it's um, quite easy and fast. And I guess you realize that this kind of cut, it won't be possible to make it on the mitre saw. It's too uh, steep, the angle. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, so you need it to do it otherwise. Yeah, so now rafters, uh, rafters are cut. Mm -hmm. We have all the cuts done mm -hmm. and now we can go to the next. But, but from my understanding, normally when you have done that work, you do all these rafters by side because then yeah. you have the material for the next Exactly. Uh, step. So this is done. Now we still have to, we have other elements. And, and, and now we have here these elements and these elements are much, much wider sizes, bigger dimensions. So uh, you see here that the rich uh, uh, pollen is much, much bigger. Also uh, that one. Much, much bigger. How much? <laughs> <laughs> 20 by, no, I say always 200 by 120, but you say always in other language. I, I speak with centimeters and you speak in millimeter. This is maybe is a different amazing. language, <laughs> 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 but I think we can really come, come along. Of course. So in fact, this is much bigger and um, the circular saw, which we've used before, is just only 85 millimeters mm -hmm. with a rail a little bit less. So it won't come through at once, but um, I will show you How that you can, can do it. Post. Yeah, for example, the post, you can use a bigger saw, mm -hmm. um, bigger circular saw, but if you have only one, two, three, four, maybe uh, not so much, uh, the HK85 is also quite a good fit for that. Helper for the carpenter. Yeah, <laughs> the best friend. <laughs> Let's have a look at it. So you see here 12 by 12 centimeters 
and um, here attached to the FSK 250, the smallest in the range, we have three of them, and you see perfectly straight cut, and just flip the piece of timber over, and with the you have a perfect indication of the cutting line because of the sprinter guard. Yeah. And look at that. Perfect. It's really a perfect cut, good cutting quality, and you can use that for like also for these visible for, for the connections. Post perfect because the post is also uh, 120 by 120. Really nice to flip over, but when you have these uh, really bigger dimensions, then and and you told me sometimes you have six meter or seven meter length yeah, yeah, then it's not so easy to flip that in uh, different uh, positions yeah at least if you are alone uh, there it would be better to have a, a different machine okay so different the the solution for that is a chainsaw the circular um the universe the ssu 200 and how we use that you will see here in this video i use here this setup with a short guide rail and uh, angle, you, uh, angle attachment for a perfect square um, angle. And I will just stop it. And I also use here the, the clamp. And this is a really nice setup, especially if you have more repetitive cuts to do. And often of, uh, mo most of them are 90 degrees. Um, of course, you can only use the guide rail or you can also cut without. So, maybe you've noticed that I also inclinated the saw a little bit. Yeah. And you have any idea, Frank, why we do that? I think it's similar the same when I cut that with, with a hand saw. Yeah. I do it also not always in a the, in the straight direction. I have always uh, in a... Uh, like uh, you go f over the, the over the edge and not on the flat right. side. Yeah. So this is this gives me a better cutting quality mm -hmm. and helps to um, to keep the. Um what what is the biggest or the length dimension? What I can cut with that uh, SSU. So maximum cutting depth would be, in your language, two hundred. Thank you. In <laughs> my language, twenty centimeters. Super. And um, this is quite a good, a big piece of timber what you can yeah. cut off yeah, with that. Absolutely. We have different chains for that. It depends if you have cross cuts. A lot of splintering I see here. A lot of splintering, yes. Um, so, but this is the next cut. Um, yeah. There we see two sides of the cuts all again here. We have here these, yeah, splintering. In many cases, it's not visible, and so it doesn't matter really. But um, check that, that now, because we have here with the splinter guard of the FS rail, Ooh. we see a huge difference between both sides of a cut. And what really matters is that it's square, that your cut is square, and um, that it's yeah. Then it's then carpenters happy. A really, a really fine, clean cut. And of course, sometimes you don't see the splintering. We yeah, uh, in many cases you don't see it. Now in this case you would see it, but the other end, for example, is hidden um, in the in the construction, and uh, there it really doesn't matter. Now we come to the next uh, application, and uh, the 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 question is how you connect that uh, rich pollen with the post. Because normally I know there's this uh, mortis, mortis and I don't know the English word. You know that? But Mo mortis, tenon, ten and, tenon mortis. and mortis right. connection. Um, you do that also here? I, ho I, I guess um, the joiners, they love glue as well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but this is, this is, this no. is uh, not the right way, no I think, no to, no to clue, use glue. No clue, f <laughs> no clue for that. We <laughs> don't have a special clue, uh, the carpenters. We, we use a, a, a different connection. Mm -hmm. In this case, um, I've used the domino. Oh, domino sounds something to yeah. you, I guess. The, uh, the big domino uh, is a really nice machine in a lot of joinery applications, but as well in some special applications for carpenters as well. And that helps you to bring these two pieces in the right position. Yeah, because 
you can easily fix it with screws and like Rakes. metal connectors, mm -hmm. but um, if you if you have this tenon and mortise system, then you have uh, uh, it's easier to mount it okay. in assembly process. Mm -hmm. It's already in the right position. So let's let's just check that um, how that looks like. So this is the are the beams. I have here the beam. It's is the rich purlin. I have here already marked <laughs> the marking of the position of the rafter. So when we mount later the rafters, we already know where it will be placed. And I also have here the position of the posts already marked. And this w in this case is the post. Maybe you wonder what is this. Yeah, nice size. This is um, the sign we use, like f like the beauty side of the wood and the reference side of the wood. So we have these both um, woods we want to connect, and we use the both the same reference okay, side. So this is uh, the um, the symbol we use for that, and yeah. So here I want to use the domino. I set domino to the maximum height. DF700, the big one? Mm. The big one, exactly. So it's around five centimeters, uh, a little bit more, mm -hmm. but you can set it high. Maximum depth. I want to use the big dowels, the mm -hmm. 40 millimeter dowels. And now um, I use, maybe I pause that. I, I have on the domino this triangle which will give me like a reference and this will this is what I align with the um, the edge of the post lines drill or route I think you call it routing right I don't know if it's drilling or yeah, routing I routing but I think but you get what I mean <laughs> <laughs> so um, both ho holes are done and then, of course, we have to do that same procedure with the post. And here, I have the possibility with the domino to use these pins. There are three pins on each side. And the nice thing is that the middle pin is aligned with this triangle. So you remember I used first the triangle, and now I use the pin. Of course. I set the same thing on both sides and then I can use the pin as a reference and make here also the, the domino routing. So two holes and you see here it fits with a triangle. So there's almost no marking involved if you have a process if you have a more process uh, proce uh, beams or posts to process it's quite easy to use that. And now to domino a little bit um, hammering on the back and then it fits together and for a more better finish I use here another tool this is a trim router for um, to make a, a nice and clean chamfer or and rounding or rounding yeah you can use any route bit you like mm -hmm. for that yeah. in my case I make a chamfer okay flip it over and this is really handy to use that tool and quite fast with it and if you use dust extraction it's even even better super so <laughs> That's, I would looks say that's it. We are ready to... Looks really, really nice that we have all these tools from Frestool that we can make rafters, earth mounts. We can make these rich pollen with the domino system. And uh, I think we are now prepared for build up yeah. this roof. Yeah, <laughs> so everything is done. Yeah. Loaded to the roof side, then we mount it and... Yeah, then um, 
depends a little bit on the logistics, what you have uh, available at your job site. Mm -hmm. In many cases, you have available a, a crane yeah. to lift up the heavy pieces. It's uh, much nicer. Yeah. yeah for if you imagine this is longer. Um, and normally you have all these rafters, five or six together, lift it up yeah, by crane, yeah, yeah. bring it on the roof construction. Then. But but first we need to fix yeah of course <laughs> some things on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> so let's do a step by step. Yeah. Okay. F first thing in our case will be uh, how we lift up the mount, uh, the 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 purlin, the riff, um, rich purlin, and then let's have a look at it. So. Imagine there's a crane helping you, and I have here these <coughs> these markings. Uh, what what we use here, w which indicates me the position of the wall, and I also have the markings. You see that for the position of the rafter, and a little hammering helps sometimes. Sorry, I'm in the way, and now I can really adjust it to the right position and then some fixing with additional screws. You use here the TPC? I use here the TPC and you, the nice thing is here I have the nice big handle. I can use it in different uh, positions and here with these big screws definitely is a it's recommended to use that. And uh, yeah, now this is fixed. Now come to the post. And now stick two parts together. The domino slides in really nice and I, I already have it in the right position. And also the post cannot uh, twist because these uh, exactly. dominoes... It's, it's fixed. It's, uh, it's not able to twist. And now the do domino is not uh, like will not support all the um, loads which will come to this connection. Therefore there is needed some additional screws. In this case, I screw them from above. Three screws, one um, like um, vertically and some angled screws and then the connection is really stable. And here also the TPC and I think these are some 10 by 300 screws, really powerful. And yeah, now yeah. everything is, is ready. Super cool. Uh, you told me that before we bring the rafter on top, <laughs> we have to mount the post on the maybe concrete on yeah. the foundation. Exactly. So here we have a little example foundation. Mm -hmm. um, of course, this needs to be uh, fixed. Now we have this fixed and now on the ground as well, we have to fix the cold connection. And something very important you should not forget is also protect the wood. Ah, okay. That you bring a, a, a tar tape between the yeah. concrete and the wood that is not uh, moisture. Moist yeah. moisture. So how we how we fix it? Um, there are different versions. Depends on the concrete foundation. We have like these post stands, and here we have just the angle connectors. Like that one. Um, yeah, for example, this will be, uh, the post will be on top of it or it will, there are different one. connectors and, but each of them, they need somehow be fixed in concrete and therefore we use um, a cordless machine. BHC. BHC, <laughs> hammer drill. So also here we have prepared the video. So this is what I want to do to fix that with a, Ah, uh, no, this is better like that, sorry. Um, I marked the right position. And you can also use it without a dust extraction, but uh, it's really nice feature here to use this dust extraction. The, the hole is clean. The hole is clean and everything you are clean. Yeah. And you have no dust in the air and... But um, now you yeah. use, not the, this is another screwdriver. What do you use now? Yeah, hold on, I will stop it here. Yeah. So now I have here the TID18, our cordless impact driver. And um, I use that for connecting the metal part with the concrete using that um, concrete screw. And um, 
The nice thing is that you don't have this impact mm -hmm. on your wrist, you know, you have the hammering, uh, which really helps to reduce torsion here. So, maximum speed, just drill it in, and then I can use the same drill to make this the, the further process um, and fixing like the metal to the wood. I reduce the speed to have a little bit, um, yeah, it's a bit, bit easier to use it and then it's, it's screwed together. Now it's time for the rafter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now the base is fixed. Now we fix the rafters and I have, I know already where I have to put them. I have done all the markings and then I use again the screwdriver to fix it. And um, yeah, sometimes in some case you may use also these metal connectors on the side as well. Yeah. So this depends a little bit. Okay, so connection is done. The same thing on the base. Um, we drill here some additional screws on it, in it, and looks really nice. And here also, yeah, more stability. For statical reasons, mm -hmm. often uh, more metal is is required. And then, so mm. this is something I can really recommend you before you deliver your your job to the to, to <laughs> end to the customer that you clean it a little bit up. And um, so I mean markings or maybe visible woods are a little bit dirty from, from, from the work process. And uh, this cordless sander is, is a really perfect thing for that. This is really handy, this cordless sander. And of course, when you have a, a, a lot of work over the head, then it's a really nice uh, tool. Yeah, and if imagine the house is big or the your job site is big, you don't want to bring the cable uh, because of these tiny little right uh, dirt parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that think that's th it. That's it. Super, Jose. That is uh, this is was really really nice. But uh, I hope you enjoy it, and thank you very much for that, uh, Jose. Thank you for your <laughs> for your help. You are a great for apprentice. For my questions. <laughs> <laughs> a quick learner, Frank, <laughs> and you definitely are hired for the next job, for yeah. the third episode. Because we go then deeper to this uh, insulation. Yeah. So first part will be, um, let's say, the insulation and the outer um, layers of the building. Cool. And um, so stay tuned and... See you next time. See bye you next bye. time. Bye.